Good morning, and welcome to Winnipeg. Yeah, we get to use our Iowa Cup today. How appropriate. Now, we'll be talking about the air compressor later. I think I kind of opened up a bit of a can of worms with my maybe a little bit, you might say, red-necked opinion about, you know, draining the tank. <laughs> Well, I don't think it was red-necked. <laughs> okay, now, uh, today we're going to be putting on a whole bunch of, uh, looks like M1s. We're back to that. Uh, we're that far back, in other words, but we're not going to be putting on the anchor chain. We're going to leave that until later. Uh, although, I don't know, I suppose it wouldn't hurt. The only difference is if I have to do any painting or anything around there, I don't want to accidentally get paint on the anchor chain because that that uh, uh, 3D printed anchor chain, I want to leave it pristine. Uh, now, uh, we are going to take a, a close look at where I had put on the micro crystal clear as, as a glue and just see if we can notice it glinting. And I, I was thinking early this morning, we haven't used our super macro in a while. Now, I don't know, I was, I was looking at this here, and because this little part is at an angle, I, it's gonna be really hard to bring the camera in from the side here, and, and, and unless I was to somehow bring it straight down, that might work. Uh, <clears throat> but I don't accidentally drop the camera on top of the deck here either. That'd be just my luck, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, so it, it's going to be really hard to get a large area in all in focus at the same time. But where the where the micro crystal clear is, that one little tiny area that was about a millimeter long, if you remember yesterday, that should be fairly sharp. Uh, most most likely sharper than if we used the regular macro lens. Uh, Okay, for those of you that don't know, this is the, the regular macro that we use almost every day. And this super macro, even though it's a lot smaller, is actually five times more powerful. It moves you in five times closer. Now I know I can digitally enlarge whatever I'm doing, you know, with, with this lens five, by five times and have it the same size, but the uh, it won't be quite as sharp. Um, now the problem is with this lens is, is it is so finicky, it is hard to focus. And uh, the depth of field is non-existent. So uh, for those of you who have, have not heard me talk about that before, this is for you. Okay, uh, I, I think we should just sort of roll right into it here. Uh, uh, we are uh, we are not going to have a sunrise here, so there was no use swinging the the, uh, the camera off the bird feeder to where Merv's flag is. Like uh, like Merv's flag is is right about right here, and uh, that's where the sun has been. It would be coming up. Uh, I just I just can't get over the fact that we just haven't had any sunrises for such a long time. Uh, it's funny weather. Must, I can't. Rem I don't remember it being like this last year at this time, but maybe it was. Uh, but it, well, at least it's better than a, a ton of snow. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, recompose here, and uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll get the uh, super macro thing over with, and uh, this is going to take me a few minutes to set up, and then we'll work on our M ones. Is it M ones? Yeah, M ones. Now you're going to notice that our super macro looks a little bit different. And well, I put an adapter on it. I've taken the adapter that was on the regular macro and I put it on the super macro. Way back, I'm guessing, oh, must be eight years or so ago, when I started using Nikon, the first one I had was a D800. And the, the D800 uh, it it would uh, it would shoot regular HD like like a 1080p um, and uh, but it did not shoot in stereo so then I upgraded to the D810 which did shoot 
in, in stereo, but it didn't shoot 4K. Then I upgraded to the D850, which is the one that's running right now, and it shoots in 4K, but only at 30 frames a second. Then I got the Z9. And the Z9 will, will shoot 4K at up to 120 frames a second, and it will also do 8K. Actually, it does 8.3K at 60 frames a second. Uh, you know, it's, when is it going to stop, right? So, um, I don't know, I'm just, just for you camera buffs, I'm just mentioning this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a switch here. Very, oh, got a message. And it's probably not from Aussie Frenchman. Uh, well, it might be. Uh, anyway, we're going to make a switch here. One unique thing about Nikon is you to take the lens off you you turn it this way and that's to release it and to put it on you have to turn it the other way it's taken me a long time to get used to that anyway uh, what we're going to try to do now is reposition everything here uh, see if I could get this in closer Okay, now our little item is right there. Now to get this down to its 5 power, yeah, I think this is going to work. I think this is going to work. Yeah, it is. We're going to be able to get we're going to be able to get in there. Guess we don't need that on there anymore. Okay, I'm just going to uh get everything going here. Sorry about getting my arms in your way so you can't really see what I'm doing. Try and get this straight. You don't see me you don't see me doing this, but <laughs> I go through this quite often before I, you actually get to see the scene. Oh there it is. Okay, let's try and lock this in place here. Maybe we'll we'll open our lens up a bit. Okay, right now for you camera buffs, we're open to uh, f 2.8. Hey, yeah, we're gonna be able to do this. Okay, just let me shut everything down here, and uh, that's not glinting too bad, is it? I want to take my spotlight though and and move it around back and forth and back and forth and uh, see if we can get this to glint. Now let's, let's, uh, let's just stop that down here to about F8. Now th th this might work out better than I thought. Okay, I think we've got that about as good as I can get it here. Um, let's see what happens now when we move our spotlight around. Now let's not try and catch this on something and accidentally... What, what, what we're looking for now is glinting off of the uh, micro crystal clear. Oh my, it's glinting. Okay, that, that's, what I, that's what I thought would happen. Okay, um, now, uh, there was, in all, in all fairness to uh, military modeler Paul, uh, he, he did say that uh, what he does is, after he puts it on, he wipes off the excess. We did not do that yesterday. 
we we just let it ooze out uh, like you see it there so okay we 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 had our uh, little experiment here let's move on and get some of our m1s in place okay we've got a plethora of m1s here i don't think we put any m1s anywhere and I'm noticing here that right in this little area right here, we put eight of them. And I've already, at first I could only find places for six, and then I readjusted my lighting, and there's there's a couple of holes in behind this splinter rail here that I couldn't see. Now, uh, I have just finished editing out everything you have seen up until right, right now. And I realized that I had started talking about the adapter that I have to put on my lenses, uh, like it's, it's back on the macro lens right now. Now, what all of that was about was that my older F mount lenses that that worked really well, fit perfectly on my first three Nikon's, won't work on the new Z9. So that's why I have to have an adapter. Okay, now, uh, just wanted to make sure I made it clear there because anyway I talk too much <laughs> now here we go let's let's recompose a little bit I'm gonna I'm gonna swing you around and bring you in like this okay if we start at the uh, bow here the first ones are are these ones right here and here then as we're moving towards the stern there's here and here, then here and here, and then here and here, and that makes up for the eight. Um, then, then there's going to be a lot more as we move towards the back, but there may be other stuff that we have to drop down first because I don't want to miss anything. So uh, I think we'll just sort of do a dry run, and, and how much of this I'm going to actually do on camera, maybe we'll just do one or two on camera, and then the other eight. I will just quickly get done. Let's move in a little bit here. Okay, I'm going to do the one closest to me here, which would be right here actually. Okay, now. Maybe if I grab hold of this differently, I should really have my other glasses on too. Try and grab this like that. Doesn't seem to want to. Doesn't seem to want to go too good. You know what? I got the wrong glasses on. Let's get these things on. Okay. I'm probably going to get my big nose in the light here. Oh yeah, that, that's gonna that's gonna be okay. So uh, I wonder, should I use the macro lens? And uh, well, no. Every time I use the macro lens, I get comments like I can see the flashing. And I, <laughs> one one person in uh, Jim Steen's uh, uh, Facebook group says, "I love the flashing." <laughs> he was trying to be sarcastic. I know. Yeah, that, that, that's going to be all right. Let's just put this off to the side here, for the time being. Um, put our, our macro lens on, and then we'll come right back here again. Okay, I hope you notice how I tried to use a little bit less glue this time. Oh. There we go. It's not quite straight. There, now it's straight. All right, you know what? I think in order to save time here, 
All right, we'll do one more. We'll do the one on the opposite side to this, and then I'll do the other six off camera. That one went better. Okay, we'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, we've got our eight M1s on, and they're all just right here. They kind of get lost in the deck, don't they? And uh, moving right along, we come to a M28 here, and it has to go right there. Okay, now I don't know if there's a right way or a wrong way to have this. I don't think so. I think it looks the same both ways. We'll uh, move in a little bit. But we won't use the macro lens. We'll just move in. Now here again, this this is angled a bit. You know, I should have maybe done a dry run here. I could get one ant, maybe use my finger. You know what? I'm gonna have to scrape some of the paint off of this these edges here. Don't worry about that extra glue. Um, yeah, that, that extra glue, that'll evaporate. It's hard to get this just exactly right. I think it has to go more this way. has to go down on your side. Does not want to go down. Does not want to go down. I'm starting to make a mess here. Uh, ooh. If I could just get it more or less straight and just leave it there like that. It's not... It's not quite straight, and I'm getting deck tan on this side here. I 
Okay, let me check the monitor, because you can see it way better than I can. Uh, it's going to have to do. It's, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. I'm going to have to maybe touch up this corner here. Now, moving straight back from this last one that we just put on, the next thing in line is these gun tubs. And uh, on the bottom there, you can sort of see that where the toothpick goes in, or cocktail stick, whatever you call it, wherever you live, um, it's keyed and it fits right on the top of right here. And uh, I'm just thinking that perhaps we might do better to uh, put the uh, the other M1s in there. There has to be four more M1s go in, and uh, then the paravanes go on here. And I'm thinking that even though these are these come first, it might be better to put them on last because we've got so much delicate stuff going on here, like the like the ladder that could, I could easily break off when I'm trying to manipulate the M1s. So, so I think I'm going to just quickly stick on the M1s, which you've already seen me do. And uh, then we'll put on the paravanes. And then we'll put, put on our J21 and J22. At least that's the plan. Okay. Now it seems when I did the paravanes on the Bismarck, they, they were, uh, part, of them, part of it was photo etch. Okay, I just want to soften these holes here. I, I had a little bit of trouble getting this one in. And uh, maybe we'll just uh, get some uh, extra thin on the pegs here and soften them a bit. Okay, now. There they go. Okay, that's not coming out. All right, now let's uh, recompose and put one of these on. Okay, let's try not to bend the ladder here. I think this should be safe to sort of lay down carefully. I just, just want to show you how that's, that's supposed to go. And uh, where's my extra thin here? I wonder if maybe I should be using the thicker glue. I don't think so. Let's just soften the top of this. I realize that looks like a lot, doesn't it? Should have maybe done a dry run. Gotta hold this differently. And there. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should have put a little bit of. Uh, Extra thin where where it's on the splinter on the splinter rail there. Well, I don't I don't think we want to mess with that. This is this is actually pretty good. All right, let's uh, back up a little bit and uh, do this one. OK. 
Okay. Having trouble grabbing Hollywood again here. Wonder if I was to use the these tweezers. Okay, now brace myself. Oh, I dropped it. Run. Well, didn't break the ladder off, still on. Problem is with the tweezers, I can't really, I can't really feel it. There we go. Yeah, it's 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 in the uh, in the slot, sort of. Uh, it almost feels like it needs more, more glue there. It doesn't feel. Uh, squishy enough. Poking at it now. Well, once again, the sun is trying to shine through onto our model table. Yep. Uh, we did not too bad today. Got a few little parts done. Uh, now, in reality, these little parts would be pretty big. Let's uh, take our perspective stick here. Did we ever give this little sailor a name? Is this... I think people are going to probably want to suggest Popeye, but uh, I don't know. I think Sailor Gabe is better. Anyway, do you think he can climb that ladder, Sailor Gabe? <laughs> I think he probably could. You know, when you when you see it in perspective, you realize, uh, you know, and that he'd have been down in here and there'd have been a, a gun or something there. They'd have been shooting at the uh, aircraft that were trying to come in at him. Uh, boy, that must have been terrifying. You know that? You know, you, you'd, you'd realize that you're, whether, whether you got hit that aircraft or not, it meant your life, you know? And, uh, and the guy on the aircraft, uh, he'd be terrified too. What a way to... We humans are, are crazy, you know that? We're absolutely crazy. I've said this before, there's, there's nobody funnier than people. <laughs> So why am I laughing? It's not funny. Um, it's tragic, actually. Okay, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.